Hello everybody, Greg and Jess here with Drifter Journey with another one take video. Good morning. We're having our morning tea yep. and we wanted to talk about building a van versus buying a van and things to think about before buying a van or having one built. Yeah. So I wrote a couple things down. We'll go down the list. It may jump back and forth because we didn't practice this. <laughs> so, we'll get you some info here. One so, thing I will say before we start that same. gives us good qualifications for this video is that we bought this van built. Oh yeah. And we're building our next van. Yes. So that's how we've been thinking about this comparison quite a bit and wanted to share it with you guys. Yeah, it's important stuff. So make sure that you like, <laughs> subscribe, comment, let us know what you're thinking. Um, we will continue to put out build videos for the new van. Yes. Uh, but yeah, so the first thing that I wrote down in my little notes this morning was cost. So, cost can vary greatly with a van. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen, but I've been seeing anything from, I don't know, I'd say 60000 to $250,000 on Instagram. For a built-out van is what um, you're saying. For a built-out van, yeah. yeah. So, total cost. Um, for That's for new to newish. Yeah. So, it's obviously a large investment. So, you want to take a look at that. Um, I would say to have one built versus do one yourself, you're looking at, I don't know, probably a $30,000. $1,000 difference? I mean, that's 20, a huge 20, range because a DIY yeah. van can be anywhere from like... You can go cheap too. Yeah, $10,000 or less to way more. So, But for for yeah. a, oh, let's say, call it a more elaborate converted yeah. van, you're probably looking at that, that difference. Uh, so with that cost comes, can you... Ability, I wrote ability down. <laughs> can you do it yourself? So one thing that came up for us pretty quickly was all of our custom welded uh, cabinets and wheel covers and kitchenette here. And we were gonna have that repeated and we thought, well, we're not really welders. So let's go talk to a welder about having this done. We got the new one quoted to do pretty much the same as what we have in here and just that piece was $6,500. So, we went and bought a welder, and we are welding and learning to weld. Uh, starting with the wheel well covers, they get covered in wood, so probably... It's okay that they're not pretty. They don't have to be perfect. <laughs> it's a good place to start. We're working our way forward. Yeah. Uh, so then we're gonna do our cubbies next, and then cabinets the kitchenette. and kitchenette. We'll yeah. come behind that. If we can't do it, we will have to pay somebody. So keep that in mind. That's yeah, the ability. I think the point being there is that there are going to be some things that you're going to probably have to learn on your own unless you do have the budget to be able to pay someone. So if you have the skills and aptitude to be able to figure out how to do it, then great. But that may segue into the next thing, which is time. <laughs> Are you sure? I was going to say stress. Oh, well, but it's time kind and of, stress. Yeah, when you're trying to learn all this stuff and make decisions and try to figure it out all on your own, um, it does require a bit more time. So I feel, feel like that's probably one of the biggest things that people underestimate when building a van is like, yeah, in theory, it all sounds pretty easy to like conceptualize a van and plan it out and then build it. But I think when it comes down to like, the amount of time it takes to actually learn how to do something before you do it, um, yeah, that's pretty significant as far as how much time it takes to get all of that figured out, so. And the other part with time is, how much time do you have? Yeah. Are you working full time? Or do you not have a job at all, like us currently? Um, <laughs> so, we've been working on the new van every day, probably, I would call it, solid eight hour day every day um, for about a month now and we're not super far in the things you don't think about are how much research you have to do to figure out how to do wiring or 800 trips to the store or um, availability of the things you need to move forward yeah <clears> so huge. one thing that was another thing I wrote down was availability for instance 
we need windows to move forward on the van because we want to put insulation in and then we need to cover the walls with fabric we can't do any of that until the windows are in and it's been a month we've ordered them a month ago they're still not here so yeah it's kind of an anomaly i, I feel like it's probably not this big of an issue other yeah, not times normally. but like because of coronavirus a lot of manufacturers have uh, a huge backlog of orders that they're trying to catch up on from being shut down for a couple months earlier this year so uh, we experienced that with the fans uh the windows several other items and it is something that we didn't really plan for we weren't really aware of it but that's partially because we jumped into this pretty quickly so yeah just something to be aware of um, you know if you're talking about buying a van and you have a timeline be aware that it takes time to get some of these bigger more expensive items to you yeah we were kind of hoping to get this and just start cranking and yeah. then we hit a wall pretty Not quickly so <laughs> where we weren't able to get anything done for a little bit uh, so we're still working on projects and figuring out things that make sense to keep doing while we wait on these windows, which hopefully will be here middle of next week. Don't jinx us right now. So that we can move <laughs> forward. Um, but we did hire out a ladder uh, for the new one. Yeah. And when I told him that we were getting windows next week, he laughed, he laughed at me <laughs> and told me good luck. That was kind of mean. <laughs> But I get it where he's coming from because he's also been waiting for the same window since July. Yes. So uh, I understand it. Hopefully it works out for us. I feel good. Send good window yes. vibes into the universe please for us, do. please. Because you're going to see this before we get them. Yeah. Next week. Probably. Um, so yeah, we talked about time. I would say, you know, we're looking at... I don't know. We're looking at probably couple two two three months total to get this done um, if we had everything available and the skills you know this is our first time going through everything so we're learning stuff we also have one to look at so we can kind of yeah, cheat a little bit that makes too a huge difference. Uh, and we've been in this one for over two years full-time so we know what we need what we like and what we don't like so that makes it a lot easier too so we kind of got to skip through the research phase um, to move forward and it's still time consuming. If you have a job and you can only do <laughs> five, ten hours a week on it, yeah, it's just, gonna take a really have, long yeah, time. Just so, have realistic expectations yeah. for how long that will take you. Six months or a year. If you're doing it on nights and weekends, it's gonna be a very drawn a out time. process. Yeah. Yeah, and <laughs> that's why for this one we actually paid to have it done because yeah, we knew we were ready to retire and get on the road. So we. Yeah. We went ahead and paid to have it done, Yeah. get it done, get on the road, worked out great for us. Yeah, time was the single biggest factor to why we hired someone to build a van versus doing it ourselves. Um, perfectionism? Are you a perfectionist? <laughs> that might be the other reason why it takes you a long time to do a van, is if you're a perfectionist like we are. Not only that, but we want to make sure we're doing it right and safe and that it's going to hold up. So our new van is probably going to be pretty overbuilt, um, but that's what gives us the peace of mind. And we will usually test fit things three, four or five times and put it together and take it back apart to make sure that it's going to work before we put on the Loctite and crank down those bolts uh, because that's that's how we do things. So it does take us a long time to get some of these projects done. We go into them thinking like, oh, this will be a couple hours, it'll no be an problem. easy win. And then like two days later, it's finally done, but it's done right and we know it's done right and that's the way that we like it, so. But going to that too, if you're not an expert at certain things, the welding for instance, it's not gonna be perfect. Um, yeah. And for people like us that struggle, kind of, yeah, struggle <laughs> with not being great at everything, um, I think when the cabinets get done, you know, we're going to have to be able to feel comfortable settling a little bit to have it not look like a professional welder did it like yeah. this one. Um, there is a different level of finish between paying someone that does this for a living yes. and, uh, someone that does it as a hobbyist, which I would call us <laughs> hobbyists or a novice or, novice, or a yeah. complete <laughs> beginner. <laughs> I think everything is doable. So Absolutely. You yeah. Can, you can do it. It's just how long it will take and to what level of yeah 
amazingness it comes out with. Yeah, and that's that's a personal threshold, right? Like, and that changes for each project. When we go through and talk about some of the stuff we've done so far, we always stop at, you know, what's good enough? What is it? Some of those projects are perfect, and that's what's good enough for us. But others are probably could be improved. Um, but because like, for example, with welding the wheel well cover, we know that it's going to be covered by wood. You know, we didn't grind down all of the ugly clumps of <laughs> metal yeah. and we didn't per perfect it because to a certain extent, like good is good enough for certain things. And we, we are in a timeline. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's a good point to make that if you're a perfectionist, understand that, you know, you are going to struggle with some of this stuff and need to accept a certain level of quality and or take the time or pay someone who's going to give you that quality you're looking for. What's our timeline? <laughs> our timeline, we have a timeline of it has to be done by preferably the middle of February and it's what are yeah. we in September? Is it uh -huh. September now? Yeah. So, so that hopefully shouldn't be an issue. We weren't even planning on starting this until the end of October. So this yeah. is all bonus time. This whole two months basically has been bonus time. But um, we do have a huge trip planned. We're gonna try and do a couple months down in Baja and then cruise all the way up to Alaska. So yay! Um, with some of you guys, hopefully. Yeah. That's the plan. Please join us. More information coming on that when we get <laughs> done with this van and have time to start thinking about that again. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's our timeline. I think the last thing we wrote down was uh, space and tools. Mm-hmm. So, what is your workspace? Right. We don't have a shop. We don't have a house. We don't have a house. <laughs> yeah, we live in this van right now. So we are actually what's called mooch docking, yeah. uh, which is perfect for us. It's been great. <laughs> uh, we are sitting in her parents' My driveway. My that mom's driveway, which thank, the, you know, they're great, gracious people for letting us do this here. Yeah, they let us hang out. Um, we told them we'd be here for a little over a month. It's been great so far. We have access to our own little bathroom. We have a key to the house, so we just go in if we need to do something. But we do stay yeah. outside still. We prefer to sleep in our own bed anyway. So yeah. um, I'm sure they would have us inside, but. Oh, of course, yeah. I mean. But we, we enjoy being outside. The second we were here, it was snowing, and they were like, you can sleep inside if you want. And we're also, like, I know. we're kind of accustomed to sleeping in cooler weather because. Yeah. You're not used to a uh, steady temperature like you are in a home. Yeah. So we can't really sleep in houses. It's like 75 degrees it's, in there. It's just, but. it's always just too hot for <laughs> we us. We digress. Anyways, <laughs> the back other to that. The other piece about doing this in a driveway oh, yeah. is that most of the stuff that we need to work on the van is in the van. So we have to like do this daily shuffle of like getting it out in the morning and then putting it all away at night. And it's, it's not ideal. I mean, it, it's, we'll give you a peek of it's it. It's fine, but um, yeah. So it's gonna get worse though. And it, it, yeah. As we get more stuff. But it could be worse. Like we could use a lot of my dad's tools and stuff. Mm -hmm. So we didn't have to make that upfront investment on buying a bunch of tools, and they all have a home inside the house. So we, like we can go get those as we please. But yeah, it is. Uh, it's kind of a mess. We basically like yard sale our stuff out in front of the van every day to get work done, and then clean it up every night, which. Um, yeah, if you had like a shop where you could just have stuff out on workbenches, that would be really awesome. Yeah, you get things done faster. Yeah. Um, yeah, back to tools. <laughs> They're expensive. <laughs> They're so very expensive. So if you don't have them, you're going to spend a ton of money on tools. And yeah. when we were talking about cost, there's so many things you don't even think about with that, too. Screws. Mm. Yeah, it, we spent like forty dollars on hardware the other day, yeah, just, just for the solar panels to get mounted to the roof. And there's all these little things you Pretty just insane. don't don't know that I do add up. Yeah. Um, but yeah, for instance, on the welder, we went I'll call it cheap, but we did a, a Harbor Freight um, a beginner welder that our buddy told us would work great for what we uh, need to use it for, and it has. So we'll put a link down to the welder we're using for you. Yeah. But just in welding, we are in probably, I don't know, 300 Just for like tools and supplies and stuff? Yeah, 300 to $400. So yeah, that adds up. If you yeah. need every tool, it's gonna get real expensive real quick. So finding someone, friends, family, someone that has that, that would be 
or maker spaces. Yeah, yeah like maker we spaces. know friends that have built vans at maker spaces Good and point. they only charge you like $50 a month to to build there so you know you do that for three months and get a van done and that's a really good resource a good way to do it but yeah so that covers the list but i think um, like oh she's got so, something no like we started the video talking about build it yourself versus pay someone yeah and i i think it's too early to say like what we prefer because the the situation we were in when we paid someone to do this was different right we were working full-time jobs and we had discretion to put aside to pay someone so now it's just different but i think we're learning a lot and we're enjoying learning about electricity like wiring and um, welding and things like that yeah, there's value no. in that too people say oh it's it's fun building a van and we just had the talk about this yesterday i don't know if i've had fun <laughs> if i've had fun yet we might have a different definition of fun so. <laughs> yes, it, there's a sense of accomplishment when things get done, cutting right. holes in the top and putting fans in. Yeah, it, that's it felt cool. good to finish, but I don't think while I'm literally doing it, I'm like, oh, <laughs> this is fun. Because you know what is fun? When the van's done and you're traveling. <laughs> and you get to go do stuff yeah. in it. <laughs> so, Much different levels of fun. <laughs> that's, that's my thought on fun. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we'll give you a quick peek of where we're at with the van right now. Yeah and what our driveway situation is that'll pretty much wrap up this video mm -hmm. we'll come do we'll do a wrap right at the end but we're not editing anything no, so we're just, just gonna we're gonna wander with this over there. so yeah this is the current van and this is the, the new van uh, <laughs> they're neighbors and then if i walk away so we started to pull our stuff out to work this morning um that's the cooktop Top and the cooktop. welder and so we got the fridge inside still we got a bunch of insulation laying on the ground here um the start of our tool pile in the driveway for the day and then sneak peek inside we've got our first little welding project wheel well uh, the flooring's done. Sorry for that little shake there. I'm holding the whole tripod in my hand. And uh, some put a bunch of wiring in. So I think that pretty much. Oh, yeah. And we got. You can't see it, but there's some roof rails up there. Uh, we're just waiting for the solar to get on there. Oh, you know what's the best part? Oh, yeah, the front seat pile. We're, <laughs> no matter what, whether you live in a van or you're building a van, you're going to have a front seat pile. Yep, good stuff. So yeah, I think that pretty much wraps it. Um, like I said, make sure you like and subscribe. We're going to keep showing everything that we are doing uh, throughout the build here. And we appreciate you. Yeah, thanks for watching. Oh, you'll also get paint in your hair. Oh, yeah. Sometimes. I tried to put in some white highlights. Um, that happened. <laughs> I don't know if you noticed that. So good stuff. Yeah. Um, Stay tuned for more. Like, follow, subscribe. Yeah, thank you. Comment.